everybody, this is Otis the Governor Griffin uh, here with Hiram Sapp Jr. It's another interview brought to you by the African American Golfers Digest, the leading publication in the for the avid black golfer. Uh, I had the great pleasure of meeting Hiram uh, at the Waste Management Open during our coverage uh, this past weekend. It was a wonderful open. I was following around Cameron Champ, and I ran into Hiram, who, uh, from my uh, from my brief meeting with him, is a very very uh, uh, astute person when it comes to black golf. And following uh, Cameron Champ was one of his uh, daily activities, and he got plenty of steps in that day. So, Hiram, if you want to tell us a little bit more about you and golf and uh, the Waste Management Open or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, we uh, look forward to hearing from you. Okay, well, thank you. Well, thank you for having me on. I really enjoyed meeting you last week. I got my Cameron Champ on and my hair runner. A uh, golf ball that was signed by Hero, as I was talking to you last week, and that's how we met. A lot of people thought I was Cameron Champ's father, and uh, were asking me about him because I had the Champ hat on out here in this lovely Phoenix uh, area. And uh, the pleasure of meeting you and your your colleague, and it was uh, it was outstanding, uh, and giving me an opportunity to come on and uh, talk about the passion I have for black golf and the passion I had for youth and helping the youth in America uh, to uh, get better exposure and better help in the game of golf. That's awesome. So uh, you followed around Cameron and Harold for the, uh, for the tournament the entire time, correct? Yes, I did. As far as, they, as far as Cameron played, Cameron didn't make the cut. I was hoping that he would make the cut because it's, it's just so nice to watch him play. He's a, uh, an outstanding young man. He's going to be our next best black golfer ever uh, behind, besides Tiger Woods. Harold is good, but I don't, Harold is not as good as Cameron, but Harold is very good. But Harold, Harold made the cut, and uh, he didn't make the cut this weekend at the Pebble Beach, but he's, uh, he's having a good year, and Cameron is really doing well. And um, I just enjoy following these guys and, uh, you know, and uh, supporting them and um, helping them whatever way I can to get the exposure that they need. That's awesome. So when you were following around, uh, you also mentioned uh, at that time, you have uh, some stories about Tiger Woods. Everybody, uh, almost everybody uh, knows of Tiger Woods, if you know anything about golf or just anything about sports in particular. But you have some interesting stories uh, about Tiger Woods because <laughs> yes. of your involvement in the golf. And it's not that it's it's not the typical story that people would hear because your introductions with Tiger comes from, from pretty strange and uh, opportunistic ways. <laughs> yeah, it does. Uh, I'm known for getting in everybody's camp. I have an uncanny way of uh, being able to endure myself to get close up close to people, whether they like it or want it or not. And um, <laughs> as you were saying, you know, um, part of what I do, you know, my business, let me get a plug for my business, SAP Superstar Sports which is the name of my uh, uh, company that I have. It's a marketing company and we do sports management and sports marketing and represent professional athletes as well. But going back to Tiger, I met, you know, my introduction to Tiger started from my father and I'm gonna talk to you about my dad, Hiram Sapp Sr., who was a great golfer, the greatest black golfer in Syracuse. He was from Albany, Georgia, came up in the South uh, before, Blacks were allowed to play on the PGA Tour, and he was a caddy. And fortunately for me, he uh, left the South and married my mother and followed her up north and didn't pursue his golf career, but um, took his golf skills up to Syracuse and got my brother and I in golf and got my interest in golf, and particularly Tiger. My father was a mailman, and uh, he uh, sub subscribed to a lot of golf magazines, and he we were following a lot of Black golfers, and a lot of them you know, it was tough for black golfers to make it. And um, we spotted Tiger at 11 years old. We had heard about him, but my father said, and he saw Tiger at 11 and told me, he said, this guy's going to be the, not only the best black golfer, he's going to be the best golfer ever. And um, that got my interest in, in Tiger. And I followed him and I was living in Detroit at the time. Uh, and when Tiger came to the Buick Open and his Tiger uh, tour uh, camp, uh, I attended that and I would go up to the Buick Open from Monday to Sunday from the time the uh, 
trim it started and just view Tiger and watch him and follow him and uh, say hi to him and get his attention. And my friends even at home were calling me and stuff and say that um, they had to look on TV to find me because anywhere you see Tiger, I'm with Tiger. Uh, in all the shots, all the everywhere he hit a ball, I would stop people from kicking his ball. I would get it. You would think I was in security. And uh, I had an opportunity to walk with his father at the U.S. Open in uh, Michigan. He was set up to walk with some other guys, but he chose to walk with me when he found out the knowledge I had for golf and that I wouldn't be asking him a lot of questions. I'd be giving him some, some uh, questions and advice about Tiger. And long story short, you know, I just started following Tiger and, and uh, uh, just uh, meeting people who wanted to meet Tiger. And one of my memorable times was um, Barry Sanders, who was a friend of mine and Hall of Fame football player of Detroit Lions, came up to see Tiger play. And Barry is a shy guy and he could pretty much do what he wanted to do. And I asked him, I said, Barry, why are you here today? And he says, well, I'm here to see Tiger. And me taking advantage of a business move and a personal move, I said, would you like to meet him? And he said, sure. And Barry didn't need me to meet him, but I took advantage of the fact that, well, let me make the introduction. That way I get a chance to meet Tiger and Barry get to meet him. And I know Tiger ain't gonna turn me down if I'm introducing the Hall of Famer to him. So I got up close to him like I do about the tee box and told Tiger and Steve Williams, his caddy, uh, that uh, would he like to meet uh, Barry? And Tiger at that time, was just starting his uh, Tiger Woods Foundation golf tournament. And um, he said, sure. So he told, uh, um, we, were at the drive, we were at the driving range. And what I told him that, and uh, he said, um, uh, sure. So he had Steve Williams and I go to his car, literally Steve Williams and I run to his car and uh, get some passes and, and credentials for, for me and, and other people. And it was quite an experience. I'm running with Steve Williams. And I just got through talking to Tiger Woods, the most famous person in the world. And, uh, you know, I had no problems getting that connection. And we ran and got the passes. And I told Barry and Barry said, oh, OK. And Tiger told us where to meet him at. And after the tournament uh, and it was just delightful. And uh, Barry was happy. And Tiger and Barry started a relationship from that point on uh, with Barry playing in Tiger's uh, tournament. And uh I just went on to uh, continue uh, following Tiger and and talking to him and um, and telling other people around the world do I know him and people were meeting him and he would say oh that guy yeah I know him uh, what a small world you know he even met my brother uh, out here in Phoenix and uh, I had my brother I would tell people what to say the key to meeting people like that is you have to have something that they you know about them personally and something that would uh, spark their interest. It would, you know, so they won't think you're just jock biting or a uh, real extreme fan or something like that. And I'm always right. able to uh, get their interest. And so, so that's, uh, a, that's a skill set in itself. Huh? Yeah, it is. It, is. <laughs> it definitely uh, it helps me out a lot. And it really is because people can't believe how I'm able to get this close to people, like especially the number at that time, the number one man in the world, you know. And uh, uh, so, and then. Personally, I've been always, with my personal uh, passion, I've been always wanting to get Tiger to do more, and not saying he doesn't, but to do more for black professional golfers. He does so much for the youth, for his foundation, and so much with all of his uh, generosity and all the things that Tiger is known for doing. But in particularly, I'm working on a project right now to try to cage the Tiger. Uh, I've got the country of the Bahamas uh, behind me, and Tiger... Play, has his tournament there and he owns a golf course there that he designed and owned and uh, they're going to help me um, give a presentation to him a proposal to see if we can get him to uh, support a, a black professional golf tournament and I've, I uh, talked to Susie Watley last year at length of uh, the PGA of America the first and only woman president who happens to be from my hometown Syracuse and she was delighted about this project that I'm enduring. She said, hey, good luck, because people, so many people ask a lot of Tiger. And, uh, right. you know, Tiger does a whole lot. And it's a long shot, but I think that, uh, especially now with the what's going on in the world and the direction that Tiger Woods is going, I think that he might be interested in this proposal and interested in what we're trying to do. Oh, that's awesome. 
And from my understanding, you also have a direct link to the Bahamas uh, on your side too, to help you uh, facilitate that meeting also, not only just the PGA. So you, uh, if you could give us a little detail about that. Yes, I do. I have the Prime Minister, uh, uh, Roger, the Sports Minister of, uh, of, uh, of the Bahamas, and he's doing a lot of things. He's, he was instrumental in getting Tigers, um, uh, found Tigers uh, golf design and Tigers uh, golf tournament there. And uh, we're doing some other projects uh, with basketball and soccer and track. And I told him about what I wanted to do with Tiger, and he, he became very interested. And he he felt that this is something that Tiger probably would at least give us an audience because the country of uh, the Bahamas has been very good to Tiger, and Tiger's been very good to them. So this is another way for me to s segue myself and endure myself uh, to get Tiger's ear, and hopefully uh, this time I'll be successful in uh, talking to men to. Um, trying to do this event for the pro black golfers where they would have a two day tournament and Tiger would play in it with, with them with Harold and Cameron Champ and all the other black golfer, pro black golfers that we have and uh, make this a special event and get these guys exposure that they normally wouldn't get unless they're with right. Tiger. Correct. Sounds like it's gonna be pretty awesome. Is there any, any talk or potential to have a junior aspect to this uh, pro tournament or just, or is this strictly just gonna be professionals from your standpoint? Oh, no, there, yes, oh yes, a, a pro-am where black businessmen could be involved with it also. And then oh, most doubtedly uh, the youth, definitely having anything you do with Tiger, uh, you know, you have to include the youth and cause he likes so much to, um, to empower our youth of all nationalities. And so, uh, yes, they, they will have a major part of that. And what I'm doing with my um, organization, it's always uh, the youth first. And, uh, but in particularly this one, uh, the pro golfer, um, everybody knows Tiger, like you said, and he's well-renowned and well-documented, but a lot of these other guys, they don't get a lot of exposure unless they're at the top of the, uh, of the field, the leaderboard. And uh, Champ is getting some good exposure. Hero got some last year. And, um, but, uh, you know, wins help. You got to play good and, and play better and win. That'll take care of business. But um, they're out there. And uh, uh, I like this. Let Tiger's coattail is large and long. And um, with him giving him, them a chance to play with him in a tournament, uh, a black event with uh, black professional golfers and amateurs, uh, this would bring tremendous exposure uh, to the black golfer, which a lot of people don't know. They only know that there's just Tiger Woods out there. Right, that sounds wonderful. Uh, quick question. So uh, besides the, uh, the Tiger uh, tournament, uh, there are some other things that I'm sure that you have in the works as far as black golf goes. Do you care to uh, just give us some insight into those? Because I think that Tiger thing is yeah. Yeah, Tiger's thing is uh, is one of them. It's one of the big things that uh, I'm currently working on. But through my company, SAP Superstar Sports, we've got a proposal in with uh, Legacy Sports. Um, Dan O'Brien, the former Olympic uh, gold medalist just secured last year um, a big project, sports project here in Arizona, 360 acres of land. And I've uh, presented a proposal in, in dialogue with him of uh, using my uh, platform and, and helping uh, the Native Americans, Latinos and African-American youth in every capacity of golf through my golf academy, teaching the youth how to become a golf. There's a lot of opportunities for you in golf outside of playing, trying to be a professional golfer. You can become a, a professional PGA member, learning how to uh, play golf and teach golf, knowing how to make clubs and also being a caddy. A caddy is a lost art uh, in golf. And we've got our first experience of, of African-Americans through the caddy world. And uh, I've caddied myself. My father was a great caddy. And I want to show the youth that there's opportunities for them, lucrative opportunities, become golf caddies, 
become golf pros on the PGA and the USGA uh, as golf professionals. So we're going to do that. And we've got this proposal in front of Dan O'Brien and we've had some dialogue. He's in the design mode in the construction mode right now. It won't open for ground uh, into 2022. He, uh, they dug it up uh, 2020 and I reached out to him and we had met before and we've been in dialogue on uh, what SAP Superstar Sports and my passion can do to help that. And also um, in Syracuse where I'm from, uh, the Hiram SAP Senior Golf Academy opening up last year and we're in the process of getting that uh, moving along so that we also will have Syracuse and Arizona connections for the academy. And we plan on moving in Detroit and in Albany, Georgia, where my father was from, uh, and Buffalo, where I went to college. Um, about five locations, we've got earmarked that we're going to uh, expand the, the academy to help the youth. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So it's called the Hiram Sap Senior uh, Golf Academy. Yeah. And in Syracuse, we've opened the, uh, the, uh, the dialogue and in the, in the uh, groundwork uh, with Ronald Jennings, a uh, former Park Recreation Director, and some of these, the uh, Syracuse um, helping me PGA professionals across the country, not just Syracuse, and helping us get this academy uh, uh, opened and operating. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so we we you've covered uh, the youth in the academy and uh, your Tiger Woods connections. Now, for those who've never attended uh, tournaments and who uh, choose to do so, do you got any pointers and tips? Because obviously, you attended many of them. For those to get there, <laughs> so they can get the best yeah. enjoyment when well, they go they out can. to these tournaments. <laughs> Okay, well, that's a good point because you got to get on your, uh, got to have your rollerblades on and it sticks when you deal with me with it. But uh, basically, it's, um, you know, getting a ticket and um, being interested. The earlier you get there, you know, a golf tournament starts on Monday. You know, they have qualifying and the players come and practice on Monday, Tuesday. Hopefully, if you have the time like I made it, you know, a lot of people have that kind of time where they can go from a Monday to a Sunday, like I do, uh, following a golf tournament. But I don't propose to do, you to do that, but try to get there as early as you can. And, you know, you'd be surprised. A lot of people like to play golf, but they don't like to watch golf. And I'm one of these people who really enjoy more watching golf than I do playing. And I played for a long time, but I really enjoy and supporting these guys. And it gets lonely out there, especially for the black professional golfers, because they don't have a lot of people really following them or really interested in uh, supporting them. So when every chance I can, that's how I met you, uh, you know, following Cameron. And um, my basic thing was, that, you know, would be to do is to get there early or to find out uh, where the tournament is and uh, take a kid or somebody else with you uh, to also endear them and empower them to see this. Because you'd be surprised how close um, you can get to the black golfers because they don't have a lot of people following them until they get into the, uh, unless they're winning or they're, uh, you know, playing very well. And so you get there and, and, um, and uh, just go to the, the, go to the driving range and go to the putting range where they practice their, to get ready, they're warming up uh, their shots on the driving range and just stand there where they're playing, uh, hitting the ball and they'll get your attention. You know, you wave at them or, say hello to them, they'll come over and stop over and, and say hi to you and sign an autograph ball like I got, or, or um, they'll sign um, their glove or ask you questions or and then follow them to the putting green and watch them put and watch them do those two things and then go to the first tee box. And um, I'm tall, so I'm able to see a lot over the crowd and um, you know be able to uh, watch every shot. And you wouldn't believe I get in almost every shot. I watch it from the tee shot, and then I go watch them at the second uh, shot and uh, I position myself right there. And then I'm there at the, um, on the uh, putting surface when they're putting, I'm right standing right there behind them <laughs> and watching them putt. And after a while they get to notice you and uh, I wear the right gear. It also helps to wear a good gear, golf gear. You know, like I got this Cameron Champ hat on and that gets people talking and gets people moving. And um, you'd be surprised how people treat you when they think you're part of them. 
And uh, these are a lot of little tips I use uh, to help right. me um, get close to these guys. But other than that, just basically showing an interest, uh, getting there as, as, as soon as you can, and uh, going out there and cheering them on and giving them support, and they'll be recipro reciprocal to you uh, supporting them. Because like I said, it gets lonely out there, and they love to see us out there uh, supporting them. Without a doubt, without a doubt. I'm sure uh, if the fans are back at the Waste Management Open come 2022, we will see Hiram again at the Waste Management <laughs> Open. So for all the uh, You'll see me before folks, then. Uh, I'll see you before then. You're going to see me. Be no, you're going to see me before then because um, hopefully you'll be one of my guests or you'll be covering uh, the, the Cage the Tiger uh, proposal well, that we got. You know, well, in the Bahamas. I to do so. You know. Uh, well, we, that would be I, awesome. Yeah, I hope you, yeah, that, uh, and then uh, there's other tournaments, you know, maybe down at the Masters. Uh, I'm working on all kinds of ways to get uh, in front of Tiger and be around Tiger and Cameron right. and, and Harold Werner, all the, uh, the the black golfers. So uh, you being in the media, I'm sure that uh, uh, this is the last that you've seen of me or talking to me. You're going to, before two, uh, 2022, and with the Dan O'Brien uh, Legacy Sports, the Hiram Sapp a Golf Academy, uh, the PGA of America, the UGA. I'm, I'm working all angles um, to get the word out and uh, to support black golf. Oh, well, I, for one, um, would be ecstatic to, to cover any of the things that you're going to be involved in in the future. Uh, so if it's a way to be there, I'll be there. Uh, for the fans out there and to all the uh, listeners at well, the African American Golfers Digest, uh, if you go to the Waste Management Open, keep your eyes out for uh, our friend, Hiram Sapp Jr. Because <laughs> he's going to be there. Yeah. Well, they, 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 uh, they won't miss me. Like I said, with the gear, because most of the time people think I'm related to the golfer. They think I'm his coach. They think I'm his agent. I have about four or five different titles that they believe in. As you saw, you know, I have the best gear I go in the, the stylish uh, sneakers, golf shoes, shirts, hats. Uh, that helps, you know, and um, and I, I stand out in the crowd and I'm very interested and I know how to position myself very well to get in every shot. I got a lot of stories. And you, when, when you talk to Tiger, if anybody meets Tiger and you mention my name or show him my picture, he's going to say, it's a small world. <laughs> it's a small world. He, that's yeah, the phrase that's of the day. Says, yeah, that's the, he always says it's a small world when people say, would well, you know Hiram Sabra? Have you seen Hiram Sabra? He just laughs and chuckles. It's a small world. <laughs>